Hi, this is Troy from Blockchain Rookies. This is Blockchain Essentials. And now we're gonna talk about, so what's the point? We've been talking about how blockchain has interesting core principles, including immutability, decentralization, and distribution. And we're operating in a trustless environment. But what are some real world examples? At Blockchain Rookies, when we talk to enterprise customers, we typically cite three different examples. Number one, trade lens. TradeLens is a partnership between Maersk, the shipping company, and IBM. They've achieved really amazing results in reducing shipping times by 40, 40% by putting shipping documents that are traditionally on paper onto the blockchain. By taking paper documents, converting them to digital formats, and storing them on the blockchain in an immutable format, they've got a really great way to ensure the integrity of the documents across the entire lifetime of packages as they move from truck to port to ship to customs house to another truck all the way to the store. And the ability to trace this on the blockchain is an amazing functionality that has been brought about by the Trade Lens blockchain. But it's not just one company, Maersk. There are 94 different companies, and that number is growing, that are currently part of this entire supply chain. And they've built an API, an application programming interface, on top of the Trade Lens database, Trade Lens blockchain, to allow for other people to build on top of that new services and new applications. Maersk is the first major shipping company to use the trade lens, and now they're looking for other big shipping companies to come along and use the exact same infrastructure. Number two, the IBM Food Trust. The IBM Food Trust is a partnership between IBM and Walmart. I've been following this particular project for a number of years. It turns out that Walmart had a problem several years ago where E. coli got onto some particular kind of lettuce. But they couldn't figure out where the lettuce that was contaminated wound up across their supply chain. And as a result, they pulled that particular lettuce from all of the Walmart stores across the whole of America. When they looked back, they said the paper documents of their supply chain would have taken them up to six weeks to figure out exactly which stores actually had the contaminated lettuce. They needed a better solution, and they needed it fast. They decided to go to blockchain, and they've built now the IBM Food Trust to provide supply chain transparency for food safety. And what they say, from farm to fork. And then when I first heard about this, I thought it was an interesting package. But I wondered, why would Walmart not just use a database? If it's just Walmart, and it's just one company, it is by default centralized. They may as well just use a database. Last year, we found out why. It turns out they've expanded the IBM Food Trust to other partners to make food safety on the supply chain available to lots of different people, including Tyson, Nestle, here in the EU, Carrefour, but also the big one was when they opened it up to their biggest competitor in the US, Kroger. It turns out that blockchains make a really great environment where multiple people who would normally distrust each other, competitors, can work together. Blockchains are not changing individual companies alone. They're changing entire industries and entire ecosystems. Number three, Blockchain and Transport Alliance, or BITA. And you can look at their website at bita.studio. At BITA, they've built an eBay without eBay. What do I mean by that? They've built a marketplace for long-haul trucking. If a small trucking provider has four trucks going from Tallahassee, Florida to Detroit, Michigan, normally they'll call a broker and say, we've got empty trucks. Find us somebody who needs that capacity. That broker may call another broker and another broker and another broker before they finally get to UPS, who actually has the demand, who needs those particular trucks. At BITA, they have built an entire marketplace on top of a blockchain where you don't need to have the brokers, where you can eliminate the middlemen and have it operate just on the blockchain. This is really interesting for adding value to the entire ecosystem because all of those brokers in the middle, they add value through the relationships, but they also take out cost. You can actually take those broker fees, up to 20% of the entire process, out and move that value back to the people who need the shipping and the individual trucking companies. The other thing about BITA's blockchain, it's not just the use cases about needing and using trucking capacity. You can actually put package tracking in on top of the same blockchain. So using the same platform, 
having the same industry of ecosystem of typically distrusting players working together, you solve one problem and then you find another industry problem and layer in on top. And now for a bonus, not everything on the blockchain is intensely industry focused. Sometimes it's just for fun, like CryptoKitties. Yes, what you see on the screen now are my own four CryptoKitties. Think of them like a digital version of Beanie Babies. Each individual CryptoKitty has nine different cat attributes. Some cat attributes are more rare than others. By storing these individual digital cats on the blockchain, which is immutable and unchangeable, you're actually having the digital equivalent of a physical asset. People buy and sell CryptoKitties, and they do that for up to a million and a half dollars total spend just in 2018 alone. It's an amazing, fun thing that's being done with blockchain in the real world. So now you know what's the point. Blockchain is not just for cryptocurrency. People in trucking, people in shipping, people in food safety, and yes, people who want to have a bit of fun are all using blockchain in the real world. I'm Troy from Blockchain Rookies. This has been Blockchain Essentials, and we've been talking about, so what's the point? Thanks for watching.